fifth round of the championship about to unfold. The lights are on. The refs come up on this big field, on this dotting track. We're green, and this time it looks like everybody does get moving. And it is skiing down to the inside, but a brilliant start by Johnny O'Connell. Seven-time winner here in the American Le Mans Series in various forms, and he now finds himself up in his second, splits that front row and pushes Lindsay to third. He did. He split the two CRP Corvettes. A great start by Johnny O'Connell, but look at Skeen. He's got the hammer down. He realized that O'Connell is going to be really fast through these sweeping turns in that caddy. The caddies were really looking forward to coming here because they said it's mostly third, fourth, and fifth gear corners. They like the handling on that car. They're a little concerned about the launch out of Moss and the hairpin up that long straight, but they like the package they have in terms of the handling as this field comes streaming down into that very turn. Moss, and it's got 5A, B, and then that launch right there in C. Look at Skeen. These Pirellis may not be up to their right temperature yet, but he has got the hammer down. That is really the ultimate open and lap by Mike Skeen. He's got the gap on O'Connell. He doesn't have to defend. Here comes Lindsay up the long back straightaway, trying to make a move on O'Connell. Boy, Lindsay got a great launch. Here we go. Lindsay on the outside. Johnny O'Connell knows this track. Savily defends it down to the inside. You can make that outside pass, but you need uh, a lot of bravado. Let's put it that way to make that work. Skeen coming around to complete the opening lap with O'Connell in second, Lindsay third, Sophronis up to fourth, and then Pat Long right there in fifth. You know what, Johnny's made a career out of driving yellow Corvettes. You gotta think this is one he'd really like to run down and pass now, huh? Yeah, he's used to other people chasing him in yellow Corvettes. Devin Cates in the VW, problems down in turn two it looks like. Let's see a debris flag. They're a surface flag, so something amiss on the track. Everybody being a little careful as they work oh, through here. Oh, there's an off And there. that's Alex Udell. Alex Udell, the youngster, is off. Oh, just nudges into the tires, Cal. He got away with one. Just missed the turning point. It's really dusty on the outside there. Turn two, one of the most demanding corners in all of North America, not just this racetrack. And meanwhile, you see it as Lindsay now has slotted into second with her Johnny O'Connell at this point as it's a CRP 1-2 at this stage. Meanwhile, Udell into the barriers, watching this battle here for the lead in the touring car class, Aaron Povoleto, and this uh, gentleman, Anthony Raponi, is absolutely locked up here. This guy is the reigning Canadian touring car champion and has a lot of laps around this Donnie Mosport track, but Aaron Povoleto calls it home too. He does, and uh, anytime you have home track advantage, it's certainly big, but here at Mosport, I tell you, the first time I came here, it took my breath away. It's mind-blowing, particularly the elevation change. The camera really doesn't do it just as there as you leap over into turn two. It's nuts. It's crazy. It's, it's <laughs> insane. And watching passes like that, inside, outside in turn two, boy, I'll tell you, talk about white knuckled on the wheel. And Mike Skeen right now executing beautifully. Pat Lindsay slots into that second spot. There is Sophronis. Now, here we go. Traffic for Skeen at a key point, getting the launch here out of this hairpin. Cal, it's everything. It is. He's got a nice gap, though. He can be really patient there through the traffic. We expected these cars to be quick here. Remember, Ron Fellows drove these cars to victory in round two here last year at Most Sport. CRP have done their homework. Right now, they're running one, two. I think Ron Fellows drove that car to victory here, so Skeen has a lot to live up to. Here we go, that's Ben Crosland. We hop on board in the Ford Mustang FR500S. There's those, and there's also the new 302S Boss, and he's running one of the older Mustang Challenge cars that's been updated and giving it a great ride. This is that turn two area. Look at this, it's a double apex. You try and clip it there, then you tighten it back up as you go down the hill. Meanwhile, traffic again for the leaders. Uh, we're just bouncing around here because there's so much going on. And on this track, look at Lindsay. Here's the decision. Now, where do I go? Because it's this blind approach. Oh, and Alec Udell is off huge. And is this a similar section of track? They're on board with him here. Yeah, he's coming down into turn two. There's traffic to the inside. Oh, he's in the grass already, it looks like. Right at that turning point, similar to what he did the lap Ooh. before, but then he just oh, he nails, goes over. nails that tire barrier. Huge. You don't typically run off there so early in the corner, have as much later, and that tire bundle just hit him head on. Oh, wow. Skeen now. You saw it from the onboard, the wreckage here. Skeen drove by as he now gets back on it here out of Moss and up on that long and ready straightaway. But a huge shunt right there for Alec Udell. And we see full course cautions. We have a full course caution absolutely with that incident. Here we go. Pace car is in. Skeen leading him around. Teammate right behind. 
in that Hawk brakes machine. Ste skiing, of course, in the Krager wheels vet. Oh, look at Johnny O'Connell wanting to be opportunistic again. And James Safronis giving it a thought as well. But skiing confident and just takes the normal line, carries a little more speed into the turn as a result. And look at that, already has a couple of lengths on the exit. Yeah, he's just taken off once again like he did at the start of this race. Certainly Safronis look Oh, Ooh. look at Lindsay. That is scary wide in turn <laughs> two. Boy, and you can see it held him up. It held O'Connell behind him. Cost him time in skiing as a result. Gets a big jump right now. And look at the margin he's got already, Cal. It's huge. Well, if he's being the team partner there, certainly Lindsay did yeah. a great job for Mike Skeen, the current leader, but O'Connell's all over him. Meanwhile, a top on board with Lawson Aschenbach. That's a run for the lead on Povaleto. That is a brilliant move down to the inside. Now we're on board with Povaleto, and Aschenbach makes it stick, slides through and underneath. And that is a great pass for the lead, Cal. It was awesome. Out of turn nine, he just carried a bit more speed, slid it into that brake zone for turn 10, and that was through. But you need some help from the guy you're passing, otherwise it can get ugly. And Mike Skeen suddenly has a big lead over that chasing group, and this is why, oh, it's Lindsay. You saw Cal a fireball out from the bottom of that car. He's done. He is, and the big concern is he may have dropped oil right in turn one, one of the fastest corners here at Moe Sport, and that'll be a concern for everyone who's following through that corner. Closing in on the finish of this fifth round of the championship, the Pirelli Grand Prix of Moe Sport, presented by Optima Batteries, and with Lindsay's issue, Mike Skeen has some room, but Johnny O'Connell is suddenly throwing down some very quick laps, and he may have been saving that caddy, Cal. He may have done so because Skeen, though, has really run a great pace here today, but Johnny O can sniff a victory. Podium <laughs> is one thing. Victory is what it's all about. He's won here seven times before, as you said, in ALMS. He wants another one. And they're coming up on that lead battle in GTS, so those guys are in their own little war, but there's some space between them, and Keen times that move into turn eight beautifully. That caddy looks really awesome through these fast sweepers here at most Sport. Again, we talked about it before, down these long straightaways. It's a little bit there, but it's all about the balance, the different venues that we run throughout the course of this schedule. It's all about having a the quality there. Well, they gave the car, the Cadillac, a little bit bigger restrictor, but they added 100 pounds, and they said we could move the ballast around, gave the handling, but but they're still slightly down in straight line, aren't they? Weight will typically slow you down, Greg, but when you can use that balance to fine-tune the race car, and where you put the weight will typically give it a bit more grip and settle things down. So. A lot of experience on that caddy crew. I'm sure they've done their homework. Johnny O'Connell working traffic. Boy, trying everything he can to try and stay with Skeen, and he just can't. Now, Skeen got a nice run there through the traffic. One lap to go. Johnny O's got a big gap to fill here on this final lap. Down through turn one. Boy, Johnny has been through here so many times. We kind of were joking about it earlier in a yellow Corvette. And now he's chasing one here down into that turn two. So the brake lights flash there momentarily. You probably just touched those. You definitely want some anchors <laughs> when you get down in, into these high speed sections. Meanwhile, let's hop on board with our GTS leader, Crosland, the young rookie, 18 years of age, doing a brilliant job. And you can see Sophronis in fifth coming by. There's Andy Pilgrim looking to get a second straight top five. And Crosland coming up on his own traffic. Yeah, and he has to be careful because Eric Foss is not that far behind. So there's a lot of pressure on this young man as he tries to finish off the job here. Yeah, Foss pretty experienced in this series, maybe not in these cars. Crosland actually would have the edge there. It's an interesting mix. This is Moss. There's the approach. Now you're 5B, and then here's that key exit 5C and that climb. It goes up about a 10-story building here. And there, that's the margin. It is close, Cal. It is. It's down about five car lengths here, but he should have enough. There's no real slow traffic in front of him. He should be able to run at his own speed. But Skeen here through the final couple of corners. Boy, has he been in control here today, Greg. He has dialed it. There is uh, nice to see Eric Meyer in that Zowie entry, that white Mazda, back on form a little bit. But Skeen, last time, out of the... Tenth turn onto the front straight. The checker flies and Skeen finally, after showing all the speed, gets a win. O'Connell second in the Cadillac. That's huge. Daskalos third. And the best run by far for Caddy at this point of the season. But Skeen getting the win. Boy, he's been waiting for this one. They've been quick. Just had those little reliability issues. Meanwhile, here's Crosland Cal. Can he hang on? Yeah, Foss is close. But what a day for this young man. His first victory in World Challenge. Superb performance. Yeah, he narrowed it down to, what, three car lengths. So Crosland feeling some heat, doing a nice job at this stage. And here's Aschenbach. Nobody in front of him. Boy, in the last lap, when you're leading and you've got some guys fairly close at hand, that's what you want to see. Aschenbach clear run through this last turn and putting Honda back on top. Here he is. And, boy, did he open up a margin. There's Raponi in second. 
Povolito coming across the stripe in third. Another good solid run for him after the win at in Miller. So let's take a look at how it finishes. Here it is Skeen, O'Connell, and Daskalos overall in a GT, GTS, Croslin, Fossa, DeSalvo. Great run by DeSalvo. And Aschenbach, Raponi, and Povolato, your podium in the touring car class. So absolutely some phenomenal racing here for Anthony Raponi, the defending touring car champion from Canada, coming in with a great run. There is Skeen enjoying the moment here with this win. There is Mike getting the win. The question is, can he do it again? Because round six, the second of the doubleheader coming up next here at Mosport. Don't go anywhere.